So to start getting this looking a little bit more like a flamethrower fire, we're going to have to make some adjustments. But when you start changing things and you're dealing with Niagara fluids, it can get slow, it can crash, you can run into a lot of issues. So for the time being, we're going to make our Niagara fluid sim a lot lower quality so we can make those changes faster. To do this, we're going to go under our Grid 3D Gas Controls Emitter, and under Emitter Summary, you'll notice there's a section called Grid, and if you open that up, you'll see your Resolution Max Axis, which is how many voxels along the longest axis uh, to use. And right now it's 256. We're going to put that to something like 80, and you're going to notice the quality will reduce drastically, but that's okay. Right now, our volume container is really, really large, and if we make that container smaller, then there'll be more resolution in the area of our effects. So right now the box is a lot taller than we really need it to be. So we're gonna start modifying that container size. Now this container can be modified here under world space size and local pivot. And this is where we also know that our, our effects is kind of being cut off on the bottom here. So we're gonna probably change a local pivot so it won't be cut off. So we need to reorient and resize this box around our effects area to get better quality. So we're gonna start changing this. We're gonna change our local pivot to something like zero and see what happens. And now we see that our effects is now in the center of the box. Now our effects doesn't really go below or go down too much. So maybe we can make that offset a bit smaller, something like 0.35 or 0.2, maybe 0.4. I think that's pretty good. Gives us a little bit of space, maybe 0.45. So now we kind of have a little bit more space below it. It doesn't get cut off. Now we're going to reduce our boxes size or our volume container size uh, in the z-axis and up and down. Right now it's a thousand units on the z-axis. We're going to reduce that to maybe 300. And right away we now start to see more detail in our effects because we've reduced that container size but it still contains the same resolution. It's just now it can put more of that resolution into our area where our effects is. Now, if we look at this angle, it looks like the box is also too big on the y-axis. So we can reduce the y-axis to maybe 200 units. And then also for the x-axis, we're emitting in kind of the center. Maybe we can offset that so we're not emitting right in the middle of it. We kind of fit this box a bit more to the shape of our effects. And then maybe now it's a little bit too long. So maybe for x-axis, we could maybe make it 350 or 450 or something, 400. I think 450 was good. And maybe for height, it's still too big. So maybe Z height, 200. It seems to be getting cut off a little bit. So I'm going to give it a 0.4 for the Z pivot offset or local pivot. And that seems to be pretty good. So we have quite a bit of detail back in here now, even though we're using less than half the, way less than half the amount of voxels that it initially was at. And this will be much quicker to make changes and do updates with uh, by having it at a, a lower voxel resolution. So again, before we move forward, let's save. And the next thing we're gonna do now is start making changes to how our fire and smoke looks. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go to our emitter summary again. So we'll stay here and we're going to adjust our density multiplier and our temperature multiplier. So density multiplier is pretty much how much smoke we're going to have. If we put this at like 100, we have a lot more density. The smoke's a lot thicker. If we put it at zero, we pretty much get barely any smoke at all. We just get temperature, not density. So we're going to put this at 1.5. We don't want too much smoke covering it. And then for our temperature multiplier, we're gonna put that maybe 25. It doesn't really matter too much. You know, 10 is maybe too little, 100 is too much. 25 seems okay. Now, the other thing we're gonna adjust is the splat size temperature. So this is a little bit interesting. It's how the voxels kind of get projected into the neighboring cells. So you can see here it says one, splat into closest cell, 
to splat into close the cell plus all the neighbors of that cell. So you can change this. And if I put this at two, you can see there's more temperature overall. I put at one, not as much. The higher you make this number, it can get expensive as it mentions because it increases the number of cells uh, exponentially. So you don't want to put this number up too high, but we have this control for temperature and for velocity. Now, right now for velocity, it's set to two. We're going to actually reduce that to one. And that will probably give us a better looking fire effect for something like a flamethrower. So by reducing it to one, now our fire feels a little bit more fluid-like and it doesn't have as much energy propelling it forward, which I think feels a little bit better for something like a flamethrower. So we'll put our splat size velocity to one for now. The next thing that we're gonna do is start modifying some other parameters to get this to look a little bit better. Now, these parameters that we're gonna modify are kind of more artistic or kind of things that you can kind of judge based on what you think looks right. Uh, but to access them, it's all going to be under the submitter summary. We have a lot of these tabs up here that we can filter out. But the next thing that we're going to take a look at is simulation. Uh, there's one here for delta time scale. So it's the multiplier kind of on the time. Uh, if we put this like 0.1, you can see it feels very, like it doesn't have too much energy. Put it to like 3, feels like it's propelled like crazy, like really a lot of high velocities in there. Um, one is the default, which looks okay, but by reducing this a bit, I think we get more of a kind of flamethrower effect, a little bit less energy in there, and just more kind of flames being spat out. So I think that's a little bit better of a setting for this. And then we also have things like density dissipation and temperature dissipation. Whenever you see the word dissipation, it's how long it takes um, for that to dissipate, to disappear. So how long before the density starts to evaporate or disappear? And same thing for temperature, how long before it starts to cool off? Uh, I'm gonna put these both to one, so it just speeds up that process a bit. So it dies off a bit quicker. And now we have something that looks like this, it looks a little bit low quality, but again, we'll up the settings once we dial in most of our um, kind of parameters and most of our look of our fire and then we can start upping the quality. So the next thing that we're going to want to do is start to figure out how should the fire actually look. So maybe we want to change its color or change its brightness. Uh, to do a lot of this stuff we're going to go under the rendering drop down. So down here to rendering under our grid 3D gas emitter summary and under render you'll notice some settings uh, the ones that we're going to change are going to be the render density gain. So if I put this really high, we'll get a lot of smoke covering our fire. If I put it really low, we just get our fire. I'm going to put it at 0.5. And then we also have render density albedo. Higher we put this, the brighter our smoke is going to look. It's pretty much bringing up the, the diffuse of our smoke. Um, I'm going to put this at 0.1 so it stays fairly dark. And then next, we also have our render temperature, which right now is set to black body radiation. It's kind of just a ramp based on uh, temperature of how the fire is going to be shaded. You can change this to curve and then go to render temperature curve and drop that down and drop down the curve. And you can modify and make your own color picks. So if I made this like blue and maybe dark blue for the core, you know, we can totally change the look of our, our fire and smoke, but technically for it to be kind of more realistic, if you're creating fire and smoke, the black body radiation fall off is gonna do just fine. And then you have your render temperature range, which is kind of like the ability to clamp that curve that determines our shading. Um, so if we put a lower Y value, it's just gonna stay like really hot, very, hot fire, doesn't cool off. The shading curve is really just only hot values, no cool values. If I make Y the end point, like two or three, um, then the curve becomes stretched. 
and the hot values only exist for a very brief moment, and then the rest of the curve is colder values. So we're going to leave this maybe at something like 1, but maybe I'll put it at 0.8 just to get a little bit more heat into the look, a bit more color. And then for the, the minimum range, we'll probably leave that at 0, but technically you could make it higher, clamped, and get different looks. But in this case, most cases, you're probably going to want to leave it at 0. Then we'll also have our render render temperature color gain. If we put this up higher, it will just multiply everything to be, it's just bringing up the gain of it overall. Uh, in this case, one is fine, but maybe 0.8, a bit darker might help. And for render temperature opacity gain, same kind of thing. We put it really high, it's gonna be dark, really low. It starts to be a little bit more see-through for the opacity. I'm just going to leave this at 0.5. I think that'll work fine. It doesn't really matter too much um, in this case, as long as we have it kind of around those values. Now, the next thing that we can start doing is start upping our quality. So we're going to go back and change the voxel resolution to be a little bit higher. So under our grid 3D gas controls emitter, emitter summary, we're just going to scroll right on back up to where we have our resolution. And before we kind of change this, we should also just save so save our progress. And now what we're going to do is change our resolution max axis. So instead of maybe 256, which was its original value, we'll put it to like 200 for now. And now you can see we get much, much more detailed uh, voxels. And in exchange for that, we get much more detail in our sim. So much more voxels, much more detail in our sim. And that's starting to look pretty cool. Kind of looks like a, a flamethrower or the start of a flamethrower. Now we could start using this in our scene already and dropping it in, uh, but we're going to run into some issues. If I save this and then we go back to our scene and I'm just going to create a brand new scene here. And if I drop in that flamethrower effect, we don't see it. Where is it? So our location has to be zeroed out for us to see it. And this is kind of weird because if we move this, it disappears. And that is because our particle emitter is in world space, not local space. So one thing that we really have to do before we can make this usable is go to our FXE fuel emitter and we'll select it. And under emitter here, we're going to set local space to on, to true. And now what we're going to do is save our emitter again, or save our whole effects system. So save. And now we can go try this out. We'll drop our flamethrower back in here again. There it is. And we can see now that if we move it, it doesn't disappear. It moves and successfully updates um, so we can properly move it wherever and however we want. Now, one thing that's going to be important is we're probably going to want to also have collisions in here. So right now, we just emit this, this flamethrower effect. But if we have something like a ball or some sort of object, so I'm just going to add in a, a sphere here. And if I place that sphere by this fire, maybe I'll add some lights in here so we can see this a bit better. So let's add a directional light and uh, angle that. And then maybe also a skylight or something. And what we're going to notice, and I think our directional light's a little bit bright. That's going to make that darker. Okay, this is good. And this should be fine. I don't even think we need that skylight. Directional light will just be fine. But if I place this sphere in contact with the, the fire, the flamethrower, nothing really happens. We, we don't see it reacting. So how can we get proper collisions on our fire? We're going to open up our effect system here. We're going to go to our grid 3D gas controls emitter. We're going to go under our emitter summary. 
And if we close all these drop downs, you'll be able to find one that says collision data interfaces. And if we open that up, we'll see that there's a tag for collisions with static meshes called Collider. And if we go under the tab that says Collide Against, you can turn on the things that you'd want this to collide with. And currently, static mesh is enabled. So if you want a static mesh to properly have collisions with this Niagara Fluids, you have to use this tag, this Collider tag, in that static mesh for it to work. So this is already set up, but we just have to add that Collider tag onto our static mesh. So if we go back to our scene, if we click on this sphere, and if we go on it to our search here, we can just search tag, and you'll see that there's actor tags, and we can add an actor tag and make that tag called collider. And right when we do that, we'll now see that this fire or Niagara fluids is colliding against that sphere. So now the collisions properly work. So now we have our Niagara fluids with a kind of flamethrower effect. Um, and those flamethrowers, that flamethrower effect or that fire and smoke is reacting properly with our static meshes if they have that collider tag. To improve this effect, we can always go back into our effect system under FXE fuel. We can maybe change how much particles we're emitting. Right now, I think if we go to uh, particle spawn, we can see how many particles we emit per second. So if I were to look in here under um, initial particles, we can see it's lifetime. If we want it to live a bit longer, we can maybe modify that. Maybe lifetime max will put at 0.75. Um, so it lives a little bit longer. And then under spawn rate, that's where we're going to find our number of particles to spawn per second. Uh, maybe instead of 90, we can reduce this to 50. I don't think we need as many particles. And uh, we'll save that. And I think if we take a look at that in our viewport, that's not too bad. We can always play around with this a bit more, but it's a good starting point. And again, if you want more detail uh, with your fluids, we can kind of increase that uh, that voxel quality a little bit more. So under grid 3D gas, instead of 200, we could do 250, but it will get slow if you put this too high, probably crash in real if you put it really high. Um, and if you needed these effects and you didn't have to have them to interact in real time with objects in your scene, you can always bake them down to a sprite sheet and use them. Uh, but this is pretty cool. We got real time volume fluids in Unreal Engine 5. So that's where I'm going to leave this tutorial at. And uh, hopefully you can play around with that, have some fun, and uh, create a flamethrower effect and start getting kind of involved with the Niagara fluids and creating your own fire and smoke simulations. If you want to see more about this, I'm also going to include a Patreon link in the description where you can actually download this whole PDF tutorial. Um, so if you want to go through those steps, you'll see it all here written out and can follow it step by step as well. So that'll be available on the Patreon. But if you like seeing these videos, please subscribe and I'll continue to make more content.